Hi, in this video, we will be discussing about synaptic inhibition. So, it is usually asked as a short essay of 8 marks and the usual question will be like, this the different types of synaptic inhibition and explain with examples. So, first of all, you have to start an answer with the introduction, which includes the definition of synaptic inhibition. So, it is basically the inhibition of transmission of action potential at a synapse. Now, what are the different types of synaptic inhibition? That is postsynaptic inhibition, which include both direct and indirect. That is presynaptic inhibition. Then there is feedback inhibition and feed forward inhibition. So now let's see each one of each one of them with explanation and diagrams. So the first type is postsynaptic inhibition. So in this type of inhibition, the postsynaptic neuron is inhibited. So there are two types. One is direct postsynaptic inhibition and the other is indirect postsynaptic inhibition. So in direct postsynaptic inhibition, it is due to the inhibition is due to the course of an IPSP. That means if suppose this is a normal synapse, this being the presynaptic neuron and this being the postsynaptic neuron, there is an IPSP produced in the postsynaptic neuron. So most probably it, will be, it is because of the neurotransmitter release like GABA or glycine an IPSP is produced in the postsynaptic neuron and it is inhibited. So that is direct postsynaptic inhibition. The other type is indirect postsynaptic inhibition which is due to the effect of the previous neuron discharge. So we will talk explain that later. So first let us see about direct postsynaptic inhibition. So now let us see more about the direct postsynaptic inhibition. So in direct postsynaptic inhibition it occurs when an inhibitory neurotransmitter such as GABA is released from the terminals of the inhibitory neuron that synapses on the postsynaptic neuron. So this is a diagram that you have to draw. So how will we draw this diagram? See first of all you can just show a neuron which is synapsing on to a inhibitory interneuron okay, which is releasing GABA. Now this will cause because the neurotransmitter is GABA it will cause inhibition of the postsynaptic neuron. Okay. So this is this is this is plain direct postsynaptic inhibition. Now where does this occur? The example of direct postsynaptic inhibition is reciprocal innervation. So in reciprocal innervation, an afferent excitatory signal excites an excitatory neuron and simultaneously inhibits another through an inhibitory interneuron. What does that mean? See, suppose there is a nerve fiber which is excitating exciting two different neurons. One is just plain excitation, but the other one is via an interneuron. So, because of that inhibitory interneuron, that, that particular neuron will be inhibited. So, this is known as reciprocal innervation. So, the same input fiber is stimulating one but inhibiting the other. So, this is known as reciprocal innervation and it is seen in a stretch reflex. See, in stretch reflex, there is contraction of the agonist with simultaneous relaxation of the antagonist, right? Here also we can see that direct postsynaptic inhibition. So this is the diagram that you have to draw. How will you draw it? See, first of all, you can draw a cut section of the spinal cord showing that dorsal root. And then you can also draw a muscle and mark its different two types of muscles as the antagonist muscle and the agonist muscle. Now during stretch reflex, when you are applying a stretch with your tendon hammer, what will happen? The muscle spindle will be stretched and it will send impulses via the 1A fiber, right? And this will reach the spinal cord and this in turn will stimulate the motor neuron. It will actually stimulate two different motor neurons of the agonist and the antagonist. One is via an interneuron which is secreting glycine. So here you can see that because of the interneuron present here, this particular, the antagonist will actually be inhibited whereas the agonist will be stimulated. So in the, in the same pathway because of the same excitation there is stimulation of the agonist and inhibition of the antagonist. So this is the example of direct postsynaptic inhibition. Now indirect postsynaptic inhibition occurs due to the pre effect of previous neuron discharge. That means the neuron must be in an excited uh, refractory to excitation or it must be after hyperpolarization. So here the neurotransmitter released is just the same. It is not GABA or any inhibitor neurotransmitter. It is an excited neurotransmitter. But here the problem is the postsynaptic neuron is refractory to excitation. 
so that is why the neuron cannot stimulate it okay or it might be after hyperpolarization so in this ca case also you cannot stimulate the postsynaptic neuron okay so that is a, that is uh, indirect postsynaptic inhibition okay now we'll move on to the next type of inhibition which is presynaptic inhibition so here in this the presynaptic neuron is affected so if this is a normal synapse this is the presynaptic neuron and this is the postsynaptic neuron in presynaptic neuron this particular neuron is inhibited so let's see how suppose this is a presynaptic neuron axon of a presynaptic neuron and this is a postsynaptic neuron now suppose there is an interneuron present which is actually producing an axoaxonal synapse with this presynaptic terminal and releasing gaba there what will happen there will be inhibition of this presynaptic neuron and it will not be able to pass on its information so this type of inhibition is presynaptic inhibition now here you should know more about its mechanism so how does this hap exactly happen so here if suppose this is that presynaptic terminal if suppose this is the presynaptic terminal so gaba is uh, the neurotransmitter gaba is released by the inhibitor interneuron now what will gaba do gaba will actually either open chloride channels and produce chloride influx or it will open potassium channels and called potassium efflux so what what will happen if there is potassium efflux or chloride influx there will be decreased size of the action potential so see we know normally the synaptic transmission occurs when there is opening up of the calcium channels and release of neurotransmitters right but because there is decreased size of the action potential this opening of calcium channels will not occur and release of neurotransmitters will not occur okay so this is how gaba is inhibiting the uh, presynaptic neuron so let's just see the steps one by one when an inhibitory neurotransmitter is released at the axoaxonal synapse it binds to the gaba a or gaba b receptors on the presynaptic terminal and it will cause increased chloride influx or potassium efflux this will produce a decreased size of the action potential and cause decreased calcium influx and this will produce a decreased release of excitatory neurotransmitter from the presynaptic terminal and like that it is inhibited okay so that was about presynaptic inhibition now let's see some examples of presynaptic inhibition it usually occurs in sensory pathways and is important in modulation of pain pain transmission see in pain transmission we know that a nociceptor a c fiber is synapsing onto a dorsal horn projection neuron now when there is modulation of pain when there is a central modulation of pain because of the descending inputs an encephalin containing neuron will synapse on this presynaptic terminal right and it will produce the it will inhibit this terminal so like that they will decrease that pain transmission so this is actually helpful in decreasing our pain so this is one example of presynaptic inhibition now the other types of synaptic inhibition are feedback inhibition what is feedback inhibition here the neurons inhibit themselves in a negative feedback manner and the best example is renshaw cell inhibition see in renshaw cell inhibition a spinal motor neuron emits a recurrent collateral that synapses on an inhibitory interneuron renshaw cell that releases glycine which is which inhibits the motor neuron so what is it see basically there is a motor neuron which has a recurrent collateral here okay and this recurrent collateral is synapsing onto an inhibitory interneuron called the renshaw cell now what is renshaw cell doing it will inhibit that parent motor neuron by releasing the uh, neurotransmitter glycine so because of glycine the same motor neuron which stimulated the renshaw cell is being in inhibited it will inhibit not only the parent motor neuron but also other motor neurons so this type is of inhibition is known as feedback inhibition and the best example is renshaw cell inhibition so the next type of synaptic inhibition is feed forward inhibition and this type is usually seen in the cerebellum so here you can see that this is a circuit diagram of the cerebellum and here you've got many input fibers like the mossy fibers and here you have the granule cell the basket cell and the purkinje cell okay now the basket cells and the purkinje cells are activated by the same parallel fiber input see for example if this is the granule cell it has it is granule cells are actually excitatory 
and these granule cells will stimulate the basket cells and the purkinje cells but the basket cells will actually inhibit the purkinje cell so the same cell the granule cells actually stimulated both the basket cells and the purkinje cells but the basket cells inhibit the purkinje cell what is the use of it see because of this type of circuit the purkinje cells will be excited fast as well as inhibited fast so it will produce a fine tuning of the movement okay so that is the example of feed forward inhibition now we have to write about the functions of synaptic inhibition why do we need synaptic inhibition see it prevents hyper excitability by providing an activity dependent inhibition so as the activity goes on because of it will prevent the hyper excitability and it also regulates the flow of sensory information through the spinal cord so because of this synaptic inhibition there is a fine tuning of each and every process that is occurring in the additional scoring points you can write some applied aspects like baclofen baclofen is a gaba inhibitor which produces a presynaptic inhibition so it is useful in treatment of spasticity of spinal cord injury and multiple sclerosis and there's another term called fatigue or synaptic transmission see the applied aspect of this phenomenon is that in epilepsy we know that the seizures will subdue after some time and that is because of this fatigue of synaptic transmission so um, those are the additional scoring points so in a nutshell we have discussed about postsynaptic inhibition the direct and the indirect postsynaptic inhibition then we have talked about the presynaptic inhibition in which the presynaptic terminal is being affected and then we saw about the feedback inhibition which is a renshaw cell inhibition and the feed forward inhibition which occurs in the cerebellum so i hope the concept is clear and you've understood how to write this answer for the exam thank you